show my experience of the Mystery Man exhibition. The Mystery Man exhibition currently from August 2023 through till January 2024 is on display at uh, the San Domenico Church in Chiorgia, Italy. If you are in the area of Venice and you are able to go to the bottom end of the Venice Laguna, uh, to the city of Chiorgia, um, you'll be able to see this exhibition uh, before the 7th of January 2024. If not, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of opportunities to see it in other cities around Italy and hopefully one day in um, the UK as well. So, here we are. Um, it's based upon the artwork of Avio Blanco, I think I've got that name correct. Right? And he has created, or his team of artists have created a reconstruction of the the body of the man modeled in the Shroud of Turin. Um, when you come in, the first thing you see is a representation of some artwork, plus also some Roman coins, 30 pieces of silver, probably um, modeled on the uh, denarii who were, which were in circulation at the time, um, which were caused Peter Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus, including the, the you see in the right hand there, the uh, the tribute coin, which is the um, the important, most important coin to have at this time. The All of these coins you see here date before 33 AD, so they would have been in circulation at the time of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Now, we see this uh, representation of various different artist designs and inspirations of various different aspects of the scripture, of the crucifixion, and also the trial of Jesus post-execution and, and pre-execution of Christ uh, dying, the um, uh, two thieves on the cross who were executed with Jesus, who had the legs broken, um, but with, of course, Jesus uh, appeared to be dead before this time. And there's scientific evidence about that, um, which I'll go into a bit later, uh, perhaps if I've got time, because I'm just learning to use using Adobe Premiere. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. And there we have some images of the of the flailing of Jesus, uh, which took place for, for most criminals before crucifixion. Uh, and a very famous painting coming up, uh, the uh, Jesus before Pilate and Pilate offering Jesus to the disciples uh, and to the other people in the crowd to whom they go release. Are they going to release Barabbas, the criminal, or are they going to release Jesus, who is called King of the Jews, and of course the Jewish people riled up by the Sanhedrin, turned around and said, no, release Barabbas, the murderer. His blood, will Jesus be on our children, on, on so forth. Now here's a reconstruction. Now, now some of this is, is reconstruction. I'm sorry this goes blank over while. It's just an issue with our, my, my film at the time. Like I said, I'm not a professional filmmaker, so um, there's some things which are go in and out every so often. Here we have here we have a reconstruction of the Roman flagrum. Often there's a cast of nine tails. Uh, sometimes they would have had um, nine strands of leather with metal balls and glass and bone wound into them. Uh, the idea of this was to basically rip a human being to part prior to uh, crucifixion. And uh, that's what they did, and we'll see some evidence of that later on. Now, something about the crown of thorns, we often see depicted in artwork of just a, a ring of thorns around the crown of Christ. Well, on the shroud itself, it doesn't look that way. It looks as though it would have been something like this. It would have been thorns bound together. And of course, there's only one person we know in history who had 
like thorns placed on, upon their head prior to crucifixion. And that was, of course, Jesus Christ. So it was more of a crown, it was more of a head covering uh, that uh, the shroud actually seems to show have taken place. Uh, of course, every Christian, every Christian who was crucified, uh, every criminal who was crucified, shall I say, every criminal who was crucified had their the accusation made against them, uh, what says thief, murderer, etc., uh, put above their heads in crucifixion, and of course Jesus of Nazareth had this phrase: "Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews." Now, if you know anything about crucifixion, crucifixion was designed to last for hours. The Romans didn't design crucifixion; they perfected it. They made it into a, um, a system of torture as well as execution. But if a person had to be dispatched really quickly, um, they would have had their legs broken, and uh, as we saw displayed in the artwork earlier, and uh, that would have finished them off within a few hours. But if they had to be dispatched super fast, then a spear in the side would have done so, which of course happened to Christ, and blood and water came out of the hole. Now, we've got a reconstruction here of a kind of cross, which might have been the type of thing that Christ was crucified on. Like I said, the actual top piece would have had the accusation, the plank put upon it with the with the accusation made upon made against Christ on it. But certainly, uh, uh, any ideas of from, from the from the scriptures and also from history of Jesus being impaled on a pike. On a single pike with his hands above his head and hands upon his um, feet uh, in one straight line, basically, as the Jehovah's Witnesses like to um, uh, portray his complete bunkum. Uh, it, there's no evidence to say this at all. Now, something about the, uh, the exhibition, which is really quite fun, but dramatization here, we have uh, a scene inside the tomb of the body being laid and the shroud being placed over the body of Jesus here. So it's a bit of animation here. It's quite um, impactful, I think, which is yeah, really interesting. I've got to say, point out, this, this exhibition is as much, if not more, about art than it is about the science behind the crucifixion and about the shroud. But it does touch on it quite considerably. But if you're looking for something in depth, well, maybe this isn't the place. But it's certainly informative. It's certainly. <laughs> trying to be respectful here. For something more entertaining, um, as, in to, as out of interest to give you information, this is a, a great exhibition to go and see. You, you've got to see it. If you get a chance, and it's and it's very really reasonably priced as well. But uh, anyway, now we're going on to the history and the artwork. Uh, we hear right. Well, this is uh, Jeffrey. Don't my picture comes back. Jeffrey did Charlie. Now, in the fourteenth century, um, I was saying the thirteenth century, uh, Constantinople was 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 um, sacked by the French Crusaders. And Geoffrey Charney is the, the first major link of, of giving a historical link to where the Shroud of Turin was at this time. He donated it to Savoy's, who became the ancestors of the kings of Italy. And eventually, in the 15th century, they deposited the Shroud in the Church of Turin, which is in today. Now, jumping ahead to the 19th century, this guy here, Secunda, um, French photographer, decided to photograph the shroud. So he takes his camera and takes several pictures. Actually, in the church in Turin, you can actually see the original camera, but this is a reconstruction. Um, takes several pictures of the shroud and this is where we suddenly see the image of the shroud which is most relatable today funnily enough when 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 he took these pictures 
which actually revealed the shroud to us. Um, his assistant said, where's the negative? And he said, the shroud is the negative. This is the real picture. Um, in the 1930s, uh, Prayer Bodart started to do some forensic um, research on the, on the shroud, which is really, really interesting um, if you're into this sort of thing. He took corpses and he crucified them. No live people were crucified here. These are, these are dead people, or executed people, people who had bothered with donated signs. Um, and it's from here that he found that if a body is nailed to a cross and the nails go through the palms of the hand, the weight of the body will basically pull the hand off the cross. They'll, the nail will rip through the palm of the hands which basically 2,000 years of Christian artwork was chucked into the bin. Okay? We often see Jesus Christ, particularly with the nails, um, put through his hands. It wouldn't have happened. Here we've got, I, I, I'm sure who this is. One now. Is it Rembrandt or someone? But as you can see, I'm, as I'm pointing out here, the nail prints are in the palms of the hand. That wouldn't have happened. The, and forensic science have shown this, shown this, that say, for example, the body weighed 100 pounds. It's not 100 pounds divided two. So 50 pounds of pressure on left hand, 50 pounds of pressure on right hand. No, it's 50 pounds plus 50 pounds, 100 pounds of pressure on both palms. The result is... Christ wouldn't have been held on the cross. Not even Jehovah's Witness depiction of Christ being nailed with his hands above his head, even though that's not um, uh, supported by the scripture, would have held that. And as we see from these, these x-ray images here, and we've seen from the shroud as well, the area where the nails would, would have gone in have gone in through the wrists Going through the wrist, and also we see the x ray pictures here of the nail prints on the corpses, and that would have gone through the wrist, and that would have held the body into place. I'm sorry to be so gruesome here, um, and I'm not even going to mention the fact that where the nails have gone through is also where the, um, the, the main nerve in the arm will have been you know, the nerve, the funny bone. You know, you hit yourself on the, on the corner of a door or something, you're an elbow. You, it really, really hurts. That nerve goes all the way through to the palm of your hands. And you put a nail through there. You can just imagine the agony going through here. But another interesting aspect, aspect from here is that, again, that the, the thumb would have gone in, would have moved in. It would have been involuntary action. It couldn't be stopped. And that's why on the shroud you only see the four fingers. Okay, the, the thumb, as we see on these photographs here, would have um, collapsed inside. In, it couldn't be, couldn't be stopped. Okay. That's the way the body works. And that's why the shroud has only four fingers showing. The thumb is underneath the hand. Now here we have some iconography um, of some of the, the pictures. There's, you get a, when you do the tour, you can get a a vocal um, information that comes through here. There's also music and stuff playing in the background as well, um, which is why, which is why I've, I'm speaking over this, so that uh, we don't have uh, any copyright issues on uh, anything that's being shown here. Um, but there's some um, iconography, and it, and it's amazing that in all the cultures that have been connected with the shroud. You get a very similar picture, um, the Jew, very much a Jewish face, uh, a pale white person. Um, um, these two images here we're about to see now, really fascinating. These, these are Roman images, and we see that Jesus is portrayed. Of course, every culture portrays Jesus in their own way. But you see the, the, the Roman images, there's no beard, there's short hair. Okay, they weren't exposed to the shroud at the time, but the Byzantines were, the, the Syrians were, they, um, 
uh, all around the Middle East, they would have seen or, or seen depictions of the shroud. And so, of course, the people drew their artwork, uh, their artwork inspired, was inspired by the shroud. Something that's really important to hear. And it was one of these areas that, that I, and one of these little areas that I think goes to show the shroud's authenticity. Because if, as they went on to say that the shroud was a 14th century fake, why is it they were making the 14th century, this 14th century image different from the artwork which was being portrayed and created in the 14th century? You know, they, they didn't. They, they went very Jewish, very Middle Eastern. It's something that's got to be considered here. Now, um, I'm going to let you see some of the artwork here. Like I say, if you go to see the exhibition, you'll see uh, a lot more in depth. Um, and they do still do a lot of comparisons with the artwork at the time. Um, they've got so lots of replicas of uh, different pieces of artwork being portrayed to uh, to tell the history of the shroud and how it could have been moved, uh, um, I believe was moved from the Middle East into Constantinople and from Constantinople to France and into Turin, which we, which we see today. Um, excuse the uh, camera issues here, but lots of stuff to tell you the stories, lots of stuff to tell you the influence on here, lots of reconstructions of some artwork. Uh, that round Roman mosaic, that's actually from England. Um, I forget now where it is. I, uh, it actually does say on, on the clip, but it was found it was found in Dorset in England, believe it or not. And uh, and you can pop, it's probably in the British Museum or something. You actually go back and see it. Uh, but you can see it in England today. You know, all of this artwork and stuff you can see around the world. This was really interesting. The, the Roman, uh, sorry, the Roman cross, the, the Russian cross. I've always wondered why the Russian cross has this little piece at the bottom. Well, it's, it's the piece that Jesus' Jesus's feet would have been connected to, which is why they have it on there. That's the uh, Eastern Orthodox cross, different from the uh, the Catholic cross as we often see it today. Now we're seeing a bit of um, of the stirp research here. Now this is the science bit that comes in from the shroud uh, and the stirp research project. The stirp research project, the <laughs> the shroud of Turin research project uh, set in 1978. Um, we've got the team listed here. Uh, big shout out to Kenneth Stevenson, who I've been in touch with recently. Um, see his name's mentioned here on the second column. Um, along with many of uh, other important things. And these, pe these people have, have done a lot of research. You can find lots of interviews with these people, or um, some of these people certainly on YouTube, which is fantastic. They were the first official scientific team to go in and research the Shroud, um, which was absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, and one of the areas that came out from here, one is that they, dis they confirmed that the Shrouds blood was in fact human blood, that the image on the shroud wasn't painted on there. Um, with technology at the time, they couldn't work out how it went up on there. Of course, we know now how it got on there. Well, we don't know how it got on there, but we know it got on there because it was, it was caused by a, a kind of ultraviolet light. Um, but we also knew that the image on the shroud could be made into a three-dimensional image. Um, no other artwork or photography in the world has that capability. Now, they do give reference to the 1988 carbon dating test here. I must admit, I wasn't quite comfortable with this 
because they they didn't actually name the team that was in there. I, I think there was there was a bit of an injustice. It shows a bit of the bias of the, of the people who put this together. Um, and the reason for that is simply this: is that carbon carbon dating actually um, uh, it was flawed. It was it was flawed. A lot of flaws in it. To come up with this date, there's 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 lots of strong arguments as to why this was flawed. This carbon dated. Um, I think they, sh they should have um, named the team who was involved in it because they weren't doing anything trying to intentionally disprove the Shroud was original. But when you take into account that even some of the, the, the chief scientists involved in that particular team actually um, are now supporting the retest of the Shroud. Uh, and particularly that the, one of the chief scientists there who, who wrote um, a, a very important article in 2005, shortly before his death, explaining why the carbon-4 dating was flawed um, and saying that he believed that the, the shroud was much older than the research showed. Um, it, I, think, I think if we were given justice to, um, to those people, they, these guys weren't bad guys. They weren't trying to um, disprove the uh, the shroud. They were just running scientific tests. Of course, the piece of the example wasn't part of the original shroud. It was part of a repair. It was it wasn't original, um, and there were lots of other flaws, which means it can't be taken um, at necessarily at face value. Okay, but I think it's it, it's it was important that we should actually, I I, f I felt we should have identified these um, scientists involved to show that you know that it was it wasn't open to show openness here. This is what I thought was a bit of bias by the uh, uh, by the creators of this exhibition, even though I agree with them in in many respects. Uh, it would have been. Better to actually name these people. Okay, now this part of the exhibition here is the wounds. Uh, a fascinating part. Fascinating. I'm trying to make it like a, a scientist. I, I'm talking about as, as, a, as someone who is a historian trying to, to find out the authenticity of this of this uh, piece of material, even though I more strongly believe that this is Christ because no other person in history has this evidence but from the scriptures and from history to say that uh, this could be him. Uh, but this shows the marks on the body from the Roman flagrums, the beating that he received, which obviously is recorded on the shroud. Um, you can go on to the BBC, uh, on well, YouTube you can see the BBC um, exhibition, the BBC documentary which goes into into some detail about the actual marks on the shroud of what will have happened. But uh, in the exhibition, they'll actually highlight how the, the marks on the shroud correspond with the injuries that uh, the person in the shroud would have received from this beating. Something that's so interesting, to, to, to the blood wounds on the head, the crown of thorns, etc. Um, I saw a documentary with the lead uh, photographer from 1978, um, Stuart, and uh, he said one of the biggest problems, the biggest issue he had, were accepting the shroud was genuine, even though he accepted there was something unique about it, was that the blood was still red. And he, but he said, in 2005, he had a conversation with one of his colleagues from the, Sh the Shroud Exhibition, and it said that in the in this time when the body is ex ex exposed to extreme duress, extreme torture, the the liver is going to produce an enzyme. And that means that that enzyme goes in um, and the blood 
remained red for all time afterwards. Absolutely uh, amazing. Now, I can't show the actual uh, the actual piece of artwork with the that was created showing the body itself. I didn't think that was right to do so. It's an it's an artist, I think, um, uh, who's done this one. They have produced stock images which are available on the internet, which you're going to see shortly, and uh, you can go and watch that uh, anytime you like. Uh, have a look at that in greater detail. So please go and uh, see it. Like I said, go and see the actual exhibition itself. Um, but very soon, I'm going to go into an interactive, uh, an interactive room where everything around is going to have displays on different types of artwork. I'm going to sh I'm going to show you the whole the whole thing here. Um, I hope it's not <laughs> copyrighted material because this is all artwork which is available around the world. Um, uh, but this is actually mind-blowing because when they show it to you, everything is shown around you. And I'm just going to be flipping all around from side to side with my camera. And you're going to see the video very shortly. Um, and they're going to show pictures from all different time periods. It's, it's clearing up. Sorry. <laughs> I'm new to this, I'm new to this technology. But we see, they're going to see the mystery man and they're going to show how art portrayed the crucifixion and burial of Christ from the early centuries after the crucifixion onwards. Starting from Paleo Christianity and like 200 years, 300 years after the death and resurrection. As you see, it's an um, interactive room. So everything's on show. This is mind blowing. Byzantine art. Like I said, it's, it's everything around you is changing. It's uh, it's it's quite breathtaking, and you'll see how the artwork changes, how the artwork uh, um, is portrayed by different artists. Romanesque artwork. Now we're into the first thousand years after Christ. Gothic area, 13th century. Some great close-ups of some classic works of art. Not just um, paintings, but also sculptures and things as well. We're going to, there was an image of a cross on there. I'm going to show you that image of the cross because it's actually in that church of Saint Domenico. Um, I'll tell you some of the story about that a little bit later. That image there always reminds me of the Miracle Maker, which is a movie that was made um, a few years ago.
and we're going to start coming into the Renaissance period. See, from the judgment scene of the, of the uh, Sistine Chapel. Like I said, this exhibition was as much about art as it was about the um, uh, the science behind the shroud. The assumption is that the shroud is genuine. I think for many people, including the people who actually worked on the Sturt project, it, it, sometimes it wasn't one thing that convinced them that the shroud was genuine. Sometimes it was a combination of many little things that convinced them. Uh, for me, I think, final piece for me, my little pieces, I think it's the, it's the x-ray image showing the teeth that Could have only happened and only been imprinted onto the cross by energy coming from within the body. The work of Salvador Dali there. I, even these pieces I'm seeing around <laughs> picking up so I'd interrupt. But yeah, that's it. Um, it had to be something coming from inside the body. It couldn't be outside. They, they wouldn't known in the 12th, 13th century about x ray images. And here we have the modern statue displayed based upon the image of the shroud where the Spanish artists have made a statue. In the 21st century. course these the corpse they call this bit the body um, it's a piece of work of art it's an, the artist asked for no photos or films to be taken so I, I respected the artist here I'm going to show a video was a, a picture that was already released uh, which you can see on the internet um, but I do encourage you to go and see the actual depiction directly and just take a moment to consider that Christ went through what he did for us. As the chief photographer on the 1978 Stir Project said, um, looking at the injuries that this person on the shroud received, he said it's not the not for Christians, it's not for Muslims, not for Jews, it's not for Hindus, it's for everyone. As this was so realistic, he looks so human. But like I say, every single mark we're on here has been um, uh, found and traced on the Shroud of Turin. So please go and when you get a chance to have a look and uh, if you, wherever you are in the world, if you see this exhibition near you or you can get to it, I encourage you to do it. It's really uniquely priced.
Now, this is the actual cross in the church. I said I, I said I'm going to do this one. It's one of these crosses that, wherever you look underneath, it appears that Christ is looking at you. It's got a really interesting history itself behind it. You couldn't take a picture from the distance from here because of, this is where the um, the shroud, uh, sorry, the shroud body, is being shown. Like I said, not like one of the photos being taken. But even this work of art has a story behind it, which is quite spectacular. It's um, It was found about 150 years ago, floating in the water in the Venice Laguna. Um, when they saw it, reports went out to local fishermen that there was a body in the water that someone was swimming and drowned him. So they sent fishermen boats out, out out there to go and rescue it. Instead of a person, they found this cross floating in the water. How long it had been there for, we do not know. But um, tradition said it was some period of time. And you can actually go and, uh, and like saying this church, you can go and see this church. And they'll, they'll give you some depiction. It says a a painting of the um, uh, what they saw when they first went to rescue this cross, thinking it was a person, but turned out to be a, a crucifix. Yeah, and whenever you when you're underneath it, wherever you look, Christ is looking down on you from far above, to the left, to the right, His eyes follow you. It's a, an amazing piece of little history in its own. So, that's it. That's the Mystery Man of Georgia. Uh, it's been on show in several places around the world. Um, if you go to this church here, to uh, San Domenico in Georgia, if you go before the 7th of January, uh, 2024, you will ever see it there. It will move on to other cities um, throughout the years. Please, by all means, visit their website. If you go to themysteryman.com, they'll be able to tell you further details of uh, where it's going to be if you're watching this video outside the time. Um, so I hope you found it really interesting. hope you found it fascinating. I hope I haven't bored you to death too much. But if, if you're like me, you suddenly become, in the last few years, quite fascinated with the Shroud and its history and the fact that it's still it's still a talking point. That this could be the body of Christ uh, portrayed to us. It's, it's amazing. And I do encourage you to see this. Whatever faith background you might be, if you've got no faith, um, come and see it. As the, the chief photographer of the Surf Project said, the shroud is for you. Thanks for watching.